the kingdom of God, it's it's time we operate in a place of being intentional. Amen. When we are intentional about the things of the Lord, then that's when we tend to see results. There is uh, one particular scripture uh, where the writer in the New Testament made a, an amazing statement. The statement he made was that whatever is not of faith is missing the mark. Another writer made a statement that said the just shall live by faith. Then he made another statement. He said the victory that overcomes the world is even our faith. Well, it's conclusive. What you do that has faith in it is what gets results. We are past the days and the hour where you can come to church or say a prayer every now and then and expect the, the windows of heaven to just open up and fall on you. I mean, if, if it were that easy, then we'd all be on easy street. Glory be to God. But God has left the system in place, and as we learn to use it on purpose, we get results on purpose. Amen? Amen. Now, here's how we're going to do it concerning our giving. We're going to pray the instructions of what the Jews were instructed to pray when they brought their tithe and their offering to the high priest. And then after that, I'm going to lead you, or all of us, in a confession. If you've tithed, if you've given, if you've sown, even if you didn't have anything to give, glory be to God, say in your heart, I'm going to have it to give next time and confess this anyways. Are you with me? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you've translated us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light where we prosper and we increase continually and we don't go backwards. We praise you for that, Lord. And Jesus, high priest, we come before you with our tithe and our offering, honoring you, honoring the Father. And Lord, our heart is in our gift today. We weren't manipulated. We weren't put under pressure. We weren't tricked into giving, but we've done it willingly. Take our tithe and our offering to the Father and worship him on our behalf. As you do so, we believe right now that we have tithers' rights, that the windows of heaven are open to us and the blessing is poured out on us in overflow. And we also believe that the devourer is rebuked for our sake. We decree that the seed eater shall not eat our harvest. Now, I want you to repeat this after me. Say, in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus I, believe, I believe I receive, I receive my, harvest my harvest with good measure, good measure. pressed down, pressed down. shaken together, together, running over. Men, Men are, giving are giving to me, to my business, my business. To, my home, to my home, to my welfare, to my welfare. and to my ministry. In Jesus' name, give the Lord a shout of praise if you believe it. That's how you release your faith. That's how you release it. Glory to God. Now, you may have your seats. Now, I'll tell you, in a faith church, could somebody help me out on this laptop over here, please, and grab that for me, if you don't mind. Uh, let me not say in a faith church, but in kingdom living, when I say kingdom, the word kingdom means the government of heaven that is operating in the earth. Anybody remember this interesting thing called the Lord's Prayer? Anybody remember that? Yes. Thank you, sir. It says, anybody got it committed to memory? Let, let's, let's just try it. So let, let's just try it. Ooh, glory be to God. So... <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy, wait a minute, thy what? What in the world is that? Thy kingdom. Kingdom is the jurisdictional government of heaven that's being ran by Jesus that's now operating in the atmosphere of the earth as a result of his resurrection. Ooh, I thought he was about to come and tackle me. A I got a little nervous. I was prepared now. I'm still ready. I'm still ready. Glory to God. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Mark got on T said, I got you now. Whatever you I got you. <laughs> and um, notice he said about that kingdom, he says, Thy kingdom come. Where? On earth. How? In what way is this government operating in the earth? As it is in heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, the same governmental authority of heaven that's in heaven is operating here in the earth. So when you get born again, you've been translated out of Satan's government and authority into God's government and authority. Now in that authority, let me tell you, there's no poverty. There's no sickness and disease. There's no depression. That's a big one in society today in the church. There is no broken marriages. There's homes with mom and dad. Go be you're not supposed to talk. You gotta be you gotta be cautious talking about that. There's homes where the wife is being respected by the husband and the husband is being respected by the wife where there is no fear about the future the expectation of how life is going to go is a good expectation of good things glory be to God now that is the government that if you were born again you currently live in now if I wasn't born again you know what I'd do I'd get born again glory be to God one man of God said if I wasn't saved you know what I'd do I'd get saved when would I do it right now glory be to God I wouldn't take a chance and leave today without making sure not just that heaven is my home but that the kingdom of God is available for me while I'm here in the earth. Are you with, are you with me on that? Okay, I guess I can move. Now, uh, we've been in a series that started, and uh, no one knows <laughs> this was a series, but this started in our New Year's Eve service. And um, we've made some changes here at, AWOFC, uh, because we are a, I come from a line full of preachers, but I subscribe more to teaching, right? Um, anybody ever heard of Smith Wigglesworth? You ever heard of that guy? Smith Wigglesworth was the guy that would, people would come to his meetings and would have uh, cancer in their stomach. And Smith Wigglesworth would punch him in the stomach. And you know what would happen? They would get healed. He would take babies. Babies that were dying and had illnesses. And he'd take them and he'd drop them on their heads in the middle of the service. <laughs> this is real. This is real. And you know what would happen? The baby would get healed. They'd call him over to the house and say, my family member's dead. Can you do something? And he'd go in the house, and he'd take the dead body, and grab the body, and stand them up against the wall, and say, live in Jesus' name. And you know what the body would do? Slide right back down to the floor. <laughs> oh, God. Then he'd pick them up again and do it differently and say, in Jesus' name, I said live now. 
And they said then the body would come walking out of the house with them, alive and completely well. Amen. Now, these are the days that we're living in. And these are the kind of miracles that it's going to take for this society. So we're living in a society that has become convinced. Well, what's happening is Satan has stepped it up. Satan has unleashed a war against the inhabitants in the earth that's never been seen before. We're coming into the days where you're going to need miracles on purpose to get results. Amen? Does that make sense? Now, um, real briefly, before we jump into this, and uh, if we could go ahead and start that clock there, I want to get you out before it's time to go to your favorite restaurant, glory be to God. And I don't know which one it is today. Is it Golden Corral? Is it MCL? Glory to God. Is it, is it the Chinaman? Have mercy. Somebody, it may be Burger King, you know, whichever, you know, glory to God. Now, um, let's pray. Father, I believe that the word preached today is going to work for everybody who hears it. I thank you for that. And Satan, you won't stop it. I decree this word is coming forward in excellence, accuracy, and boldness. And the questions are eight. And if you don't have a Bible and you would like one, please uh, raise your hand and uh, an usher will get you a Bible. And if you do not prefer a Bible, please join us on our screens here. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 1. And we're going to Take our text from there. Don't intend to be before you long. Um, but we've been in a series where we've been dealing with the balance of grace versus condemnation. Grace versus condemnation. Now, let me ask this question, and I know a lot of you do, but i got to ask it anyways, because we minister to a lot of folks online as well who are actually a part of Anointed Word of Faith Church that just live in different places. Now, this kind of church, this is a Word of Faith Church church. Let me explain to you what that means. A word of faith means, a word of faith church means that we believe that what's written in the Bible works on purpose when you apply faith to it. So we subscribe to something called the good news. Here it is. Watch this. That God's number one desire is to do good to you. Is to bless you. Is to make you a success beyond your wildest imaginations. Empowering you to take territory while you are still here in the earth for the kingdom of God, not just after you die. There are a big portion of your benefits that you are supposed to see while you're alive, not after you die. Now, when you start preaching to people like that, people start finding out things that maybe you don't hear in normal church. You start being exposed to things that, in, in some cases, can make can make you a little. What's a good word for this? Razzle dazzle, if you've not heard it. Can even seem a little bit sacrilegious. 
Ooh, everybody been to church. Glory to God. <laughs> that the things that happened to Job, all those terrible things, God had nothing to do with it. You see, that's what you'll hear right there. If you, my granny's, my grandmother's from uh, uh, Kentucky, and she said, "Get yourself out of here." What you say? Uh, you'll hear things pointed out about Job that Job made a statement and said, "Just in case it may be that my sons or my children have sinned and cursed the Lord, I'll offer up sacrifice." Continually. The next verse says, Thus Job did continually for a long period of time on a regular basis in the Hebrew, which was totally opposite to the way Job was taught to offer up sacrifices. Job was taught by God that you can operate either in faith or in fear. You can never operate in both. So God used the sacrifices that people offered up in the Old Testament to read the condition of their heart. He's still doing that now. You ever heard this statement? The sacrifice of praise. So it's in your praise at times that God can see the condition of your heart. And it comes up before him like an aroma. Either it smells good and it's pleasing, or it's razzle-dazzle and mercy. Or you may hear things like, it's the will of God for you to have more than enough. So that you can help meet the needs of other people. That the people dictating the laws in society should be the church. Not the sinner. That the quality of the neighborhoods in our communities should really be dictated by the believers in that community. That that is the kind of power and authority that you're operating in. Right? Now, we've got to get an understanding of the balance here. Because once you start pursuing this, you can find yourself over in a place of works-based gospel as opposed to faith-based focus. Does that make sense? Now watch this. If you've never heard this, you don't need to even be worried about the work side yet <laughs> because you've not really gotten over into that yet. You need to hear about how faith works. You need to hear about how dynamic this thing really is. But I have to minister to those of you that have been living by faith and going after results. And I believe the Lord has commissioned me to help you answer some questions about sometimes uh, the lack of results that you may see and what adjustments we can make to get more results. Amen? Amen. Is that okay? Look how much time I've used up. Lord have mercy. Ooh, I got to move. Now, watch this. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. To those that are in Christ Jesus there's no condemnation to you anymore because of where you have been seated as it relates to being born again. So I need to demonstrate this. Let me get some help up here. Glory be to God. Let me get Paige. Says, Paige, come on and help me, preacher. Come on and help me. And then let me get let me get Jair. Come over and help. Glory be to God. Have mercy. Now, 
Because I, I really don't want you to miss this. Now, before I got born again, I was right here. Everybody that was born into the earth was born in this position. What's this position? I was born separated from God. I was born in what's called the earth cursed system. I was born in power to fail. Then, even if I was born into a rich family, I was born by nature and by standing at a disadvantage. Every human being. Because of who? Who caused that? Adam did that. Right? Adam ate the fruit, glory be to God, and put us all here. Right? Now, God's idea of not being at a disadvantage is wholeness. He designed you to live nothing missing, nothing broken. So to be whole spiritually, soulishly, that's your mind, will, and emotions, your intellectual capacity, your imagination, your ability to dream, right? Socially, your relationships, physically, in your body, healed, and financially. No poverty. Now, this is the state that Adam lived in before he did what he did. Are you with me so far on that? Now, because of Adam, we're born here. But when you got born again, come here for a second. What happened is you were translated from this place. So the, actually go on that side right there. Where's my right? That's my right. Right here. Step right here for me. You were translated. Literally, your spirit man was placed inside of Christ in heaven and seated at the right hand of the throne of God. The highest place of power authority and watch this and provision so you say people leave the provision out you just want to be holy see you, you just want to try to live right that ain't getting it haven't you seen does you know good to be holy and still be broke does you know good to be holy and still be depressed does you know good to be holy and want a relationship and can't get one do, do, are, are you still here have you gone home now, you are translated to this place. Now, it is a fact. This is where you are. I don't care what you do. I don't care how you feel. It does not matter what it looks like. I don't care if you're living on A Street in the short north about 20 years ago where I live. It does not matter. If you've been born again... This is who you are. Amen. Now what you've got to figure out is how to live here in the earth from this position. From a position of power, authority, blessing, and provision. This is what you've got to figure out how to do. Now, there are rules to this man. You hear me? There are levels to this. I must inform you. It will not happen automatically. Are you okay with that? Let me just... For you faith people, is that just a tad bit disappointing? Yeah, okay. I got some honesty. Because you know the scripture we lean to. All things... Work together for the good. <laughs> Saints, you got to read the whole text. Doesn't exactly work like that. Actually, in that context, he was talking about prayer. Talking about all things work together, which included praying in the spirit or praying in tongues. 
causes all things in the spirit to begin to work together, particularly when you don't know what to do and pray for as you ought, right? But no, all things won't automatically work together for the good. I'm going to have to learn how to skillfully operate in the word of righteousness, almost like a tactician to get results on purpose and I'm going to spend my lifetime developing it in each area of my need and assignment. Are you with me? I'm going to develop this concerning the healing of my body. Concerning my health. Don't say nothing about these pals right here. My pals. Mind your business. Glory be to God. Everybody can't be fit like Brother Cam, see? <laughs> no, you can't. But you got to do it by faith. <laughs> You'll need some corresponding action, though. You'll need some works with that. <laughs> right? Um, um, wholeness or developed in my finances. Developed as a husband. Developed as a wife. Developed as a church member, as an employee, as a business owner, as a congressman or woman. Hello? Amen. God puts you in those places too. Amen. But I, I got to move from there. Now, when you're in this place, and Chelsea, I'm just not going to get done preaching this because I have already taken so much time. Glory be to God. But I'm going to go where I can. There is now, once you're in this place, no condemnation. Now, what does condemnation mean? Condemnation in the Greek here is translated guilty verdict or negative damning, damning ordinances. Did you get that? There is no guilty verdict. This is like if they go and run a background check on Pastor Al. I don't know how many years has it been? Okay, I'm, I'm good. If they go run a background check, there is nothing there on me. Do you see that? In every area of life, spiritually, Physically, soullessly, socially, and financially, there are no disadvantages to me and there are no hindrances to me in any area. I am nothing but empowered to prosper in every area of life, which takes care of the guilty feelings when I do something wrong. Now, when I miss it, what do you call missing it? What's the word for that? Oh, sin. Okay. When I sin, it still doesn't affect my standing in God. Why? Because I'm still seated here. What's happening when I sin? What I'm doing is operating now in a different system. A system that is beneath me. You see that? I'm operating up down here. This is beneath me. I'm up here. I'm elevated. Glory be to God. So, I have the choice as to whether or not I want to operate in this system. But you need to know operating in this system is illegal. And when you operate illegally, what happens? You have consequences. Now guess what? Guess where the consequences are not coming from? They're not coming from the Lord. She said, she said, what you say? Where are they coming from? The consequences are coming from the adversary. Satan himself. John talks about it. He says that when you walk in love, the wicked one toucheth you not. The law of love is the fulfillment of the Ten Commandments. 
and the new covenant requirements. Do you see that? So even though I'm seated in God, I can operate illegally and then attach myself to consequences. But even when I do, it does not change who I am. David, who was a prophet, he operated in the office of a prophet, a priest, and a king. Everybody heard of King David? Yes. David was, he was a seer. He could see into the spirit realm. And one time he saw into the future concerning the benefits of the New Testament believer. Who are those people? Who are the New Testament believers? That's us. That's you if you've been saved, born again. And here's what he saw. He made this statement. If I make my bed in hell, thou art with me. Nothing could change the standing of the born again believer, even if he's living lower than where he or she is empowered to live. Are you with me? We want enough to make you well. We go home right now. Church is over. You can live off of that for at least two weeks. Okay, you guys can have a seat. Thank you so much. Let's give him a hand. All of that for one verse. My goodness. Y'all supposed to be praying so I can get this out. I am watching the clock, so I go, I'm not going to keep you two or three. I'm watching the clock. So. Now, she said, forget the clocks. Now, if they get mad, I'm going to blame it on you. I'm going to blame it on you. Glory to God. Now, watch this. Considering... Where I'm seated, and we understand that now, right? Since I am seated in this place, and there's no condemnation to me, now I need to navigate life, and I want to read this right on my notes, because the Lord was specific about this. I need to navigate life being word of God minded and faith focused instead of being behavior focused. Do you get that? Yeah. Saints, you've got to stop disqualifying yourself every time you miss it. You've got to stop thinking and concluding that the car that you were believing for got disqualified because you went out and had a drink last night. Now, you ain't got no business going out drinking. What club was it in? What club was it in? <laughs> Are you sure you're saved? No. <laughs> right? Or some of you faith people, they say about faith people that we never actually really go that far. We just kind of told the line a little bit. So you're not going to see these faith people go out and get a drink. What you're going to see them do is skip prayer for about three or four days. Right? Um, get lazy and uh, not make the necessary confessions when you're attacked. Speaking unbelief instead of speaking life. Right? Am, am I in the house? This is right? Or when you are confronted that you have a disposition about yourself that is maybe less than godly, what you do is you get into a place of condemnation about it. Takes you months to come out of it. So correction to you is not promotion. Correction to you is guilty verdict. Do you get that? You go back and you presently look at the state of your finances or what you drive or where you live or what's happening on your job and so forth and you conclude that I don't have these better things because I'm not good enough. When you do that, you're operating in Christ illegally. You are operating in a different system seen in verse 2. Go to verse 2. 
For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of what? Sin and death. That's where you're operating. This is where you're operating when you get over into condemning yourself. Do you know why there's no condemnation to you? Because if you sin, what do you do to fix it? You repent. If we do what? Confess. How do you do that? Here's how you do it. Uh, watch this. C come here, my love. Okay, okay, come here really quick. This is... Listen, my wife told me one day, she said... She told me one day, she said, baby... She said, Ayla came to me, that's my daughter, and said, Daddy's always right, Mommy, and you're always wrong. That's what she said. Do you know what happened when I heard that? Yeah, I know y'all don't know behind the scenes, but I, I am a crier, Lord have mercy. It breaks me down sometimes. I get emotional, and my wife is, "Baby, it's okay. Oh, honey, it's okay." Sometimes I do that. Sometimes she does it, not all the time. So it's like, "Yep, you got to get over it." <laughs> now watch this. Here she pointed out something about me that was true, that was accurate, that pointed to a chink in my armor. And here's how I repented. Babe, I'm sorry. Of course, when it's just me and her, so it's a different kind of sorry. Well, I'm sorry, babe. No, really, really. She doesn't like that. She doesn't like that kind of whining. She doesn't like it. And I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I'm going to do better. Right? Now, when you go to the Lord, I don't care what you've done. If you will repent quickly over little things, you won't lament in guilt over big things because big things won't continue to happen. Do you get that? So I go to the Lord. I say, Lord, I missed it. I see it. Forgive me, Lord. I stepped out of love. I repent. I call it unrighteousness. Cleanse me from the unrighteousness associated. And watch this, folks. Right now, I believe I receive my forgiveness and my cleansing right now. Now, do you know what happens by the time I say amen right there? It never happens. To me, it never happened. It's done. There is no more guilt. See, you know what saints are doing. You're waiting for two and three weeks until you feel forgiven to start walking in that forgiveness. Now, that's opposite from faith. Faith says, I act and believe it because he said it. You said, Lord, if I would confess, you would forgive me. I confess, what's up with my forgiveness, man? Where is it? I need my forgiveness. Where is it? And you're going to hold God to his word concerning every area of life you're navigating, especially where this condemnation is concerned. You repent and you repent quick and you get right back up. Refuse to be disqualified because there is no law of disqualification against you. You cannot be disqualified by any outside force or action. Only you can disqualify yourself. Are you with me? Woo, come on, give the Lord a praise for that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now I'm almost done. I'm still watching the clock. I'm doing pretty good. About, little, about 20 minutes left up there. Can you make it 20 more minutes? Is it getting hot in here, Jesus? Ooh, it's a little warm on here, Jesus. Have mercy. Now, turn with me really quick. Turn with me really quick. Wait a minute. You're going to stay right there. 
Have mercy. <laughs> Glory. And um, I want you to look at, go down to verse 6. Go down to verse 6. Now, what I've got to do from this point, I feel my Bill Winston anointing coming on. What I've got to do at this point is instead of being behavior focused, I've got to let being faith minded dominate or influence my behavior. In other words, I don't try to behave without the motivation of faith first. Now, Sister so Christian, come up here and help me demonstrate this. And uh, let's see, um, Sister Lita, you come up here and help me too. Glory be to God. Now on the camera, they be complaining when y'all go past this line. They be on me. Glory be God. Get watch this line, okay? Have mercy. Now, I, the statement I just made is, I need to be, I need to let my faith dominate my behavior. That needs to be first. First question is, is what is faith? Faith is substance. That means assurance. Being assured. It is the force of being totally convinced. Says, come and see me after church. I've got five dollars for you. If I say that to you, what are you thinking? You're going to get that five dollars. You know your brother. You're going to get that five dollars, right? She's assured. Now, how did she get assured that she would get that five dollars? Because I said it. She concluded by my character and what I said that it was credible enough for her to accept it and believe it, right? That's it. That's it. That is what faith is. Romans says faith cometh by what? Yeah. Hearing. How do you hear? Watch. Cresha, come and see me after church. I got five dollars for you. That's how faith comes. Yeah. Faith does not come from this. Now let me get deep. Watch this. Oh God. Thank you Lord. Oh God I come before you humbly as I know how. Thanking you and praising you for the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, abiding deep down uh, on the inside of my soul. Oh God give me strength today so I can face that evil woman that I work with. Lord, you know she's the devil. That looks great. <laughs> Loose here, devil. Right now. I'm not here right now. No, no. What, what am I pointing out? Faith does not come by praying for it. The faith that takes, that overcomes the world, the faith that pays the car note that's due right now. The faith that pays the rent right now. The faith that puts gas in the car right now. Cometh by hearing. First. Before I can try to behave. Particularly concerning the area of sin. Before I can try to arrive at a place of holiness. Let's, let's, she looks holy today, right? Let's call her holiness. You know, where I'm, the, I'm the, the cleaned up, spotless, acting, talking, doing what's right believer. I'm picking on it, I'm just saying. You know, right? In order to arrive at this place... I can't skip over this and just start trying to do this. I can't just stop. I can't just start trying not to smoke the blunt. 
Are you still here? Have you gone home? Are you allowed to say that in church? Let me clean it up. I can't just attempt to refrain from smoking the marijuana. I can't just try hard, really hard, to not watch something on the phone that I shouldn't watch. Watch this. I can't try to get busy to stay away from the boyfriend that is going to put me in a compromising position. I can't just try hard to put the bottle away and so I don't drink it. I can't just try really hard not to listen to the music that's killing us, especially the black people. The, the cultural music is killing the black people. Literally killing us. Right? I'm going to leave that alone. I already got in trouble for that before I'm leaving it alone right now. Right? What I have to do is understand in order to arrive at this place and do those things, I need to hear first. So in the area of seeing, if, what do I need to hear? Well, Cresha, the moment you got born again, you died to sin. So now, sin no longer has any dominion over you. So, but bro, what about the thoughts, the feelings, the pictures, and the temptation? Oh, sis, don't worry about it. Those are lies. All you got to do is enforce your authority over it. Well, how do I do that? Say something to it. When you get the feelings, when you get the thoughts, when you see the pictures and the suggestions, say, those are not my thoughts. I don't receive them. Devil, I don't know what you're talking about. You're crazy. Do you not know that I'm the righteousness of God? Sin has no dominion over me. If I'm already married, right, and I'm having those, devil, those are not my thoughts. My wife satisfies me at all times. What are you talking about? I don't go down the street of another woman. Go with me to God. Do you see that? Now, when you start there, you can pursue this. But if you try to pursue this without hearing first, now you have entered over into works-based living. Now, that may be basic for you. Get really quick, let me say this. You face people, sin is not your issue. Right? If you come over here and really live by faith, the sin problem, you'll be over it really quickly. You'll get to a point to where you don't have a sin-based conscience. I'm lit by the glory, by the grace of God. I'm living with that. I don't have a sin-based conscience. I'm not sin-focused. That should be the norm, not the end of your lifetime achievement. It can be the very basics. Of Christianity, right? So I said, what you so you right show about that? You right show? Yes. But you got to do it by faith. But let's say I am trying to go and get the house. I'm trying to get the bill paid. I need the car payment paid. My kids are acting crazy. And at the same time, I can't afford the food that I need to take care of all of them. And at the same time, Lord... I need a spouse. You, you, you see? Am I, am, I, am I missing any? Is there anything else you can throw into this pot? At the same time, truth be told, I deal with a little bit of depression. I'm lonely. Right? I've got to hear what the Word God, what the Word of God says in that area. And here's the process. Hearing, believing, Saying and then acting. What influences my actions has to be in what you are hearing. Faith cometh by hearing, the scripture says, but hearing by the word of God. 
How shall they hear without what? A preacher. How shall they hear what? Faith. How shall they hear faith without a preacher? And how shall the preacher preach except he be what? Sent, which means anointed. You've got to be hearing. Somebody has got to preach to you that all grace is abounding towards you, making you sufficient in all things you're about in every good work. Sin has no dominion over you. My God is supplying all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. This has got to be preached. And faith has got to be in it in order for you to step over into corresponding correct action and get the results. So you and I have stepped into the days where you are dependent on the word that is coming out of the preacher's mouth. We're going to come to a time to where this will be the only safe, integrous institutions and organizations operating in this country. The church. The true church. There's going to be people that have been in church 30, 40 years that are going to have to come back and say, I thought I knew the word. And you're going to have to learn some things all over again. Isn't that something? It's going to take humility to do it. Humility is going to say, listen, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what people think. I want results. And I'm going to do it. You receive that? Come on, let's give the Lord a praise. You can have your seat. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I believe I'm going to stop right there. Um, I won't get into the rest of this until next week. Lord have mercy. If these were the old days, I would keep going, but I don't want to wear you out. Glory be to God. I got to remember, um, I don't want to be like Pharaoh. I got to let God's people go. Have mercy. Everybody's standing. Everybody's standing. Alia sana kani telebe stonoko arasam bakide. Mondarasi kanandie malakorebe se krombaite. Thank you, Lord. I'll do that. So the Lord said that I need to explain why I'm praying in tongues. That's what I did. And I get that from the scripture found out in Corinthians that praying in tongues is the equivalent or the same as praying in the spirit. And one portion of that scripture says that he who speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man but unto God. Then he says, how be it in the spirit he speaks or releases or partakes in mysteries, divine secrets and revelation from the spirit of from the spirit of God and from the kingdom of heaven. So just now, when I prayed in the spirit, there, I'm consulting God and said, "Lord, what do you want me to do next?" Now the Scripture says that him who prays in an unknown tongue also pray that he may interpret. So I always believe I receive interpretation. As a result, this informs my next course of action here today. I want to make an altar call. No pressure. In case you didn't know, in a faith church, we don't care what you look like. We don't care how you look. We don't care how spiritual you are. We don't care how long you've been in church. We are a bunch of people that came from nothing. When I look back at my past, 
I have nothing to brag about because I was absolutely a nobody and a nothing. Isn't that something? Now, some people would calculate my past and say, dude, you were, you were a big deal out there. But I count it as trash for the anointing right now. We don't care how anybody looks. We care about the good old Holy Ghost results. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I know that when the anointing is available, and is present for a specific thing. If you'll believe it. And you'll receive what I said. I know that when I pray for you. What I pray will happen. We've seen it happen. Over and over and over and over again. First thing I want to offer here today. I see that, Lord. Instead of being born again, if you have broken fellowship, what do I mean by that? If you've turned away from the Lord, if you've gone back into the habits of unclean living or sinful lifestyle, and you've already been born again. Then I'm telling you. Today is your day. To turn it completely around. Glory be to God. Come on give the Lord a praise for that. You don't have to walk out of here. Uncertain. About who you are. Or where you're going. Taking it day by day. You can walk out of here with the total confidence that I'm right with the Lord and my future is bright in Him. And He will begin to repair any and everything you messed up. If there is one like that in here today, you got to be bold. Step out. Come up here to this altar so we can pray for you. And as we pray, that thing will be turned around just like that. That's what happened to me. I was in a car going down 71 South, about 60 miles an hour. My wife was beside me with demons coming out of her body. I had a pocket full of drugs, didn't know what was going on. Right there in that moment, I did this. I turned back to the Lord and I've been free every since that moment. All of it, Percocet pills, marijuana, Molly, MDMA, powder cocaine, cigarettes, alcohol, all of it. At one time, totally, 100% free, addicted, depressed, free from that moment. If you're online and you're hearing this and that's you, message us right now. Click on the button, send a message, say, that's me. And when we pray, we're going to pray for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No shame in here. God is a good God. He desires to do good to you. He desires to bless you. What's in front of you is greater than anything you ever see. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what situation you got yourself in. What's in front of you is greater. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Now, if you're in here and you've been believing for something specific, you've been standing in faith Believing for God to move and perform a miracle that you cannot live without. This is the kind of person I'm talking to. The person that needs a miracle that they cannot live without and it has been held up. If you sense 
that it has been held up then come up here and we're going to agree with you and we're going to break it in Jesus' name. Yes. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise Thank you, Lord Jesus. Alessandro Luco Bale, Tana Croba Secchi, Eriano Rosa, Carebe, Cronelessi, Carate. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mukona liad na basedi ne kora bate. Mora basedi bi karete ne kora ba kitara ende leso kroda leka anente. Just Krisha, come up here, and I want you to get behind. I want you to, my sister, come up this way for me right here. My sister, step up that way right there for me. My sister, can you step right here? Step right here, please. Right beside us, you can step right there. I see you step right there. Maleta nan koron nelesi koron nele koron do sakra. Chelsea, come over here and get behind these ladies right here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Brother Cam, come right here for me, please. Now these are separate prayers. Where the anointing is concerned, we've got to be very specific. If Jesus could have healed everybody's eyes just by touching their eyes, then he never would have spit on the dirt to put it on a person's eyes for them to be healed. He was sensitive to the functioning of that anointing, which he was hearing inside of him. And that's what we've got to do today. So I want to distinguish. If you're on this side to my right, this is for rededication to the Lord. That's what's over here on this right side. If you're over here, you're believing God for something specific. Very important. Now, here's how this works. We're a team in here. We're all going to release our faith for yes. each other. Amen. The first people we're going to release our faith for are the people we are praying for to be restored. Glory be to God. Glory to God. This is celebration time. Yes. Glory to God. This is time to run. Yes. This is time to shout yes. and say hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, the prayer that I'm going to pray, and you're going to agree with me wherever you are. How do you focus your faith? Stay minded about the benefit of these people that are being restored. If you're online and this is you, then you need to agree with me. While I'm praying for them, I'm praying for you. Some of you have asked me about that. I'm praying for you too right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now I'm going to lay my hands. And as I lay my hands on you, while I'm praying, you're making a decision in your heart that says, Lord, I see where I am. I see where I missed it. And I'm turning back to you from this day forward. No more guilt. No more shame about where I missed it. No more condemnation. I'm expecting at the end of this prayer today to be totally restored. Do you agree to that as I pray for you? In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, these are your daughters, my sisters. Oh, Lord, they want the joy of their salvation restored. They're not strangers to you, God. They know who you are. They've acknowledged you as their Lord. 
Restore the joy of my salvation right now, Lord. Restore the joy. Lord, we repent. Lord, we say forgive us, Lord. Cleanse us. We turn back to you. Lord, you were calling me. I was waiting. I was waiting. I couldn't see, but I heard you calling, Lord. I saw you being good to me in spite of, Lord. I've been looking for you too, Lord, and I know you've been looking for me. I'm incomplete without you. I was born to live in you, with you, and for you. I can't do this without you. And Lord, we receive. I pray from the meditation of their heart and the decision of their will. Let it be so. I call them restored. Yes, God. Renew. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Clean. Hallelujah. And forgiven in Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Right now. Hallelujah. Receive it right now. Hallelujah. Receive it. Yes. Receive it right now. Yes. Forgiven. Yes. Yes. Forgiven. Thank you, Jesus. Satan, I break your power and I cancel your assignment. Oh my right now. Jesus. Let them go. Right now in the name of Jesus. They are the righteousness of God hereafter. Yes. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Now come on, give the Lord a praise. Lift your hand. Give the Lord a praise. Receive it right now. Receive it. I want everybody in the house to say this after me. In Jesus' name. We believe. We receive. Restoration. Restored. Forgiven. Made whole. In Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Come on, take these two sisters back there. Come on, scoot up this way for me. Mola sande kore beta de le kota maro kore de si akrate le sekrota. So let me be plain here. Let me be clear. Um, I, I have no magic. Have no magic potion. No magic wand. I'm not a wizard. Your situation is dictated by me. The Lord instructed me to join my faith with your faith. So in this line. Whatever you are believing for, I'm simply going to agree with you on it. And I'm going to be the point of contact today. And if there's been anything holding back your miracle, you need to believe you receive it broken today. Not tomorrow. Not next week. It is broken today. And going forward, time is of none of your concern. Yes, sir. Take yourself out of time. Woo, the Lord said, give me instruction first. Okay. Time is not on the table right here. We don't care about the time from this moment forward. The point of contact breaks whatever spiritual yoke, whatever attack of the enemy is against you. You leave this altar concluding that it happened just the way I said it. Yes, that it broke just the way Glory I said it Amen. in Jesus' Praise name. God. You received that? Yes, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Get over there, Christian. Get over here. Stay back there. Morale coda ve sedi ando cron valeta arisa nulla cotane corata. Oh, could I lift your hands, my brother? In the name of Jesus, I break every attack. 
every scheme of the enemy every trick against you against your mind that's where it's happening in your mind I speak freedom to your mind right now you have the mind of Christ let this mind allow it be in you that was also in Christ Jesus that says it is broken I am free and it is happening for me now nothing shall be impossible to him that believes Lord I release my faith with my brother that that which he is believing for be broken be granted now in Jesus name thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus Thank you, Lord Jesus. You just receive it by faith. You don't need a touch. You don't need a chill. You just receive it by faith. Come here, Chelsea. Come up here. Molaka de Bia no Korebi Sokropala. My core and then lay your hands right there. Right there. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mokrondelia basokrondaleta. Inebosa. Inakotele se crate. Me coram bale so cronda le se crota necita. Uno bale se crota. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see, you must not strive as though I'm not with you. I have been with you from the moment of your confession. You must try harder, no longer. For thus saith the Lord, you are already qualified. Having done all to stand, continue to stand without fear, without regret, without condemnation. And I will do it. Yea, have I all already done it and none can stop it so begin to lift up your hands and rejoice and celebrate the reality of a bright future glory be to God the reality of good things coming to you for you designed to bless you and that which will come, will come and not delay. In Jesus' name, Satan, I break every mental attack in the soul realm against her. I break your lies in the name of Jesus. She can have it, and it's not complicated. She can have it. It is not complicated. And in not many days, and in not many days, that which you have been believing for, making adjustments, refusing to compromise about, shall come. Be steadfast, unmovable. Don't turn to the right nor to the left because your breakthrough is nigh. For thus saith the Lord, this is truly your year Glory. of harvest Jesus. in Jesus name Jesus. begin to look for the harvest begin to call it in begin to praise in your alone time for it begin to celebrate it 
as though it is already yes. so. Hallelujah. Glory to and God. you yes. shall see an acceleration. Amen. Glory be to God. Acceleration for that which you have absolutely placed a demand on by faith. I hear in the inside, not an audible voice. I don't hear an audible voice, but I hear inside of me through the inner witness that Al, she has stormed my gates. Glory. <laughs> She has stormed my gates. Is that right? She has stormed my gates. She absolutely refuses to be denied. And in that, I delight. Thus saith the Lord, Thou who is faithful. Come on, give the Lord a praise. My sister, can you raise your hands to your mind? Lord, I so cry, Bele Corombali, and the I so crombari cotane, cobale, to cota. Make it, oh Lord, I see that. I see that. Mocora, Belia, so Navate, Mocronda. Just lay your hand on that shoulder right there. On the list of crow by by it on no co mare carete. On the list of crow by the corner. Mande. In Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that my sister had to be here today for such a time as this. Because Lord, when I was praying and you began to move in my heart concerning the people who this altar call was for, This sister, your daughter, was one of the main people it was for. Exactly as you said that she's been believing that, Lord, there is something that she needs from you that she can't live without form of depression. I break it right now in the name of Jesus. I decree good things over her now in the name of Jesus. I decree that the head that was once held low is being lifted up. Be healed and be made whole every bit of you inside and out. She's gone as far as she can go on her home without divine assistance in this matter. I release that anointing right now. And I break the power of the enemy concerning this situation. Mondole kabasini korobo tania sokola bekota. Yeah, Lord, that. Break it. Satan, take your devil. You go now. Your time is up in this area. You go. I command you off and out of this. Your jurisdiction is released. I reassign you out of 
this area of her life. I thank you that the miracle that is coming now will run through not only her, but transform those close to her, particularly family. And it will be known and it would be recognized that God has visited my house. The God of breakthrough has come to me today. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord a praise. Come on. Give the Lord a praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord 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 Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come over here. Right there. Same shoulder. In the name of Jesus. Lord, in my heart, you're telling me to say this and to pray this. I pray, Lord, right now that she be strengthened in her spirit by your spirit with strength that she does not have on her own. Strength that she requires from you. Oh, I break the hard thing. I break off the hard places concerning her. Those things that have been hindrances. And Lord, you see her heart. Her heart is for you, Lord. Her heart. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that she is an example. You've called her as a leader to those around her. That she is the one that people will look up to and not across that. Glory be to God. That her faith will encourage many. And thus saith the Lord, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything impossible for me? I'm not limited to natural resources. I'm not limited by anything in heaven or in the earth. I can do it. I will do it. And as of today, I do it now in the name of Jesus. Devil, your power be broken now. Assignment canceled now. And Lord, I release my faith. I agree with her for total victory in this matter. And again, it shall be a blessing to her and those close to her. In Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Thank the Lord Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Give him a shout. 
Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For well, this is the day. This is the hour. And yes, this is the season that have been held up. The things that have been resisted. The gates shall no longer be strong enough to hold back your advancement. Amen. For this day and this season is the hour of victory and harvest for those my people in Jesus name. So begin to step out. Begin to place a demand on those things that my son, your coveted partner, your redeemer has made available for you. Begin to invoke your covenant rights and call in the harvest that belongs to you by blood-bought rights and nothing in the kingdom of darkness shall stop you from obtaining and it coming into full manifestation in Jesus name come on let's give the Lord a praise hallelujah thank you Lord Jesus Ooh, thank you, Lord Jesus. I hope we got that transcribed. Thank you, Lord. Really briefly, if there's somebody in, online or in person and you don't know the Lord before we close out and you want to know Him, you want what's being preached about to be your reality, then you just pray this simple prayer. You mean it from your heart. And we're all going to repeat it out loud. Say in Jesus name, Jesus name. Father, Father I, believe I believe you are, you are who, you who you say you are that you can do, that you can do what, that what that preacher says you will do. Come into my life. I repent of my sins. Forgive me. Make me brand new. Cause me today to be born again. I believe, I believe, I receive it, I receive it and, I and I rejoice in my new life. In, new life. in, Jesus, name. in Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord one more shout of praise. Thank the Lord Jesus. Amen. We want to thank everyone for coming out today. And uh, we want to just encourage you to keep moving in the Lord. Those of you that are online, uh, we're working on an online church to be able to accommodate those of you that can't uh, get to church. But those of you that are able-bodied, and particularly if you don't have a home church, the doors are open. Come build with us. Come and find a family that is willing to love and support you on this journey called Kingdom Living. Glory be to God. Uh, also, um, if you would like any more information about the church and uh, resources that we have, please message us or email us at anointedwordoffaith.org and someone will follow up with you uh, to meet whatever need that we can meet. All right? If there is nothing else, we have a little statement that we make at the end of every service. And the way it happens is I repeat the first part and then you guys uh, actually repeat the second part together, okay? 
This is our statement of faith. And uh, let me give it to you. Um, while everybody's standing and we will be dismissed on this. Normally we have it up on that screen, glory be to God, but uh, <laughs> we, uh, okay, there it is. Can we make that big? See that first line in there? That first line is my part. And uh, that second line is what we're all going to say together, okay? On the count of three, I'm going to read the first part, and then we're going to say the second part together. One, two, three. What's in front of you is greater than anything you've ever seen. Than anything you've ever seen. Glory be to God. Consider yourself dismissed.